Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today we're going to be looking at the major projects that we completed in 2023. We're going to look at the highlights, all the things that went well, and then all the lowlights, all the failures. It's fun to look back on everything that was completed, and it's nice to have this YouTube channel where I can actually go back and look at the videos and see how I was feeling when these projects were either completed correctly or running horribly. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at the garage. We're gonna look at some of the major tool purchases that we made this year and see how everything's holding up. So let's go ahead, let's get into it. This is probably one of the funner videos that I get to do every year because I actually get to look back on all the projects that I've completed and it's usually I've done more in the past year than I've expected. Now, one of the nice things about having a YouTube channel is I get to pretty much log all this and share it with you guys so that you can see not only how the cars evolve, how the restorations come, but you also get to see how the garage evolves. In this video, we're gonna cover each one of the cars. We're gonna cover the Factory 5 GTM, the 69 Mustang, as well as the F-150. And we're gonna look at the highlights and lowlights of some of the main projects that I've done. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at how the garage has evolved. A few years back from the garage that I've started in, all the way to here, to this place here, how this place has changed, and what big tools have been purchased this year and how I'm liking them. So let's go ahead, let's start by talking about some of the cars. Let's go ahead and start with the Factory 5 GTM, then we'll talk about the Mustang. So this car here is a Factory 5 GTM supercar. You know, it's one of under a thousand made, and this is a project that's been sitting in my friend's garage forever. We brought it here last October, and then we started working on it. You know, it's made a lot of progress on it, when we first got it, there wasn't the body on it, it wasn't running, and it was in pretty dire condition. A lot of the body panels have been sitting outside, and with that, there's been a lot of damage that needed to be fixed. And there's also some missing parts from it. But we've made some good progress on a lot of the different projects. For the GTM, we essentially made it into a car. We got the cooling system sorted out, which included creating a lot of custom brackets to get everything mounted on the car and we fixed all the leaks that were coming from it. One of the major goals of this year was to get this car running, and I spent pretty much months trying to figure out what the issues were from wiring, from fuel, figure out why it wasn't coming together as it should. So I put together the fuel system, we knew it was getting fuel, we knew it was getting spark. I mean, the only thing left that could have been was timing, and what we figured out is the wiring on the coils was actually backwards. The right side and left side of the LS1 were actually swapped and because of that it was backfiring through the intake it was backfiring through the exhaust and when we fixed that that car was finally running and that was probably one of the biggest milestones of this year because to finally have your project car actually running and driving is huge so i was excited to get that done and then to then we were on to the next milestone which is getting the body on the car when we got the body in the car everything looked great but one of the things that we noticed is a lot of the panels aren't fitting right and there's a lot of fiberglass work that needed to be done. And then I started on a lot of the body work, getting a little of the small projects done. We got the doors on, we got the hood on, we got the engine compartment hatch on, and we made some good progress on it, but there's still a ton of work that needs to be done and even some parts that need to be replaced. So that's something that we're gonna need to take care of this upcoming year. And then one of the last big milestones, I mean, we've got the interior on and then we got the lights working. So we have brakes, we have lights in the back for brakes, turn signals work, and we're at a point where we're almost ready enough to register it. Now let's talk about the car over there, the 1969 Mustang. Now for the 69 Mustang, the car behind me, it was really a year of maintaining the car and enjoying it. This year, my wife and I had a, our first child, so with that, really didn't have too much time to do car projects on it, and I really didn't want to take it down for a few weekends because, you know, if I start a small project, that could roll into a multiple week project and I would not get to drive the car at all. So this year we have a lot of big plans for the car this winter. Make sure you go check out the video on that. That'll tell you what's coming up for it. But we did get a few small projects done on this car. Now in 2023, a lot of the projects were simple. So one of the cruises that we were on, we lost one of the hood pins. The nut actually fell off the bottom of it and it was only held on by one lanyard plus the latch. So I ended up replacing that. I had a lot of little small wiring things that I wanted to fix and replace. So in this car, a lot of the wiring is still original. The under the dash wiring is original. So I ended up not replacing that, but spending some time trying to figure out where the rattling is with that. I spent some time in the engine compartment replacing some of the wiring there. There's still a lot more cleanup to do this year, but 
we ended up getting a lot of that sorted out. So all the lights and everything are working correctly. Now, one of the big projects that I did that I use pretty much every time I drive the cars, I installed a single retro sound speaker in the dash. You wouldn't think it would sound that great, but that plus Bluetooth is a lot better than nothing. So I'm happy with that. And that's one of the things where sometimes just having the option to listen to music is really nice to have, especially on long drives. Now I also mounted a fire extinguisher behind the driver's seat. It's not rolling around anymore. So if I do get in an accident, it's not turning into a projectile. So good thing to do. And then I replaced the seat tracks. While I was down there installing the fire extinguisher, I noticed that one of the seat tracks, one of the bolt hole, one of the studs that goes to the floor was actually damaged. And I ended up replacing the seat track on both the passenger and driver's side. Now that I'm kind of settled into this year, a lot of upcoming winter projects on this car. Make sure you go check out the video for upcoming winter projects. And next week I should have the first video out on that doing the exhaust tips on the car. Now I'm really excited about that because it's gonna look like a much more finished car from the rear. Now let's go ahead and look at what we've done to the truck. Now for the truck, it was a year of maintenance, getting things done. There's a few upgrades I did to it, but nothing major to the suspension. Now one of the things I did replace on it was a wheel bearing. Huge win that that just fell right out and I didn't really need to use something significant to get out of place like I had to do on my wife's car. My hood latch sensor failed on it, so I ended up having to replace that. You know, if you take it to the dealer, it's a three to $500 job. I did it for myself and it was about a hundred bucks. So I think the part's actually under a hundred dollars. I'd have to go back and look, but it's, it was an easy job to do and it took less than 30 minutes. So I saved myself 300 plus dollars. I ended up putting a cold air intake on the truck, which sounds really nice while driving. I also ended up putting Morimoto tail lights on it, which do make the truck look significantly better at night. So I'm really, really happy with these and they make the, it's a huge upgrade. So if, some, if you're gonna pick one mod to do the truck, I'm always someone that really likes nice lighting on a vehicle. And then I started using Foreskin to do a lot of the mods on this. You know, we installed the trailer brake controller, we changed the tire size in the computer so that it's now reading the correct speed on the speedometer. So lots of little mods, more things that come on this truck this year as well. So now let's go ahead, let's go back in the garage and look at a lot of the big tool upgrades we did this year. Now overall, the layout of the garage is still the same. It's a two car garage with a lot of the tools up front and over here is pretty much just storage and where the cars sit. All right, so the biggest purchase of this year was obviously this mill. You know, I bought this from Little Machine Shop. It's a company out on the West Coast. It's a high torque 6450 mini mill and I've used it a lot more than I actually expected to. Originally, I bought it to do small projects on the kit car, but as I've realized a lot of the car parts that you get on the 69 Mustang, a lot of the car parts you get in general for aftermarket parts don't fit that great. So this has actually given me the opportunity to make those parts fit better to what I need. So I've been using this significantly more than I expected and I've had to buy significantly more tooling than I expected. Now when you get a mill, the first big expense is the mill. The second big expense is all the tooling that goes with it. So everything from files, from end mills to, I actually have a little saw right here. So a slitting saw to drills, to tools to plane faces, surfacers. It's really never ending. So I've been buying a lot of different tools for this as projects have come up. And you know, it's been something fun to play with since I got to use them in college. Now I have my own here, even though it's a smaller one. It works great for small garage projects and as a hobbyist. Now, one of the other big tools that I got was an Autel. Now this allows me to diagnose and work on multiple different vehicles. It's really helpful when you have different vehicles with different systems on it. So if you have a Ford vehicle versus an Audi vehicle, you can use this to do a lot of the diagnostics on it and to set the car into some service modes. So it's coming very useful, especially on the Audi. So the Ford, I can do most of the stuff I need to do through Foreskin, but when we look at the Audi, it's a 2015 and you can't even reset the service indicator on the car unless you take it to a dealer or you get something like this. Now, I know there are cheaper options that you could buy to work on your Audi to get in to clear the service modes, but you know this was really good because I'm using it on multiple vehicles and I wanted something that would work on both the Fords that I have, the Audis that I have, as well as my parents' vehicles, my friends' vehicles, 
anything that I, they want to check out, they can use this for. So this was really an investment for something for me to use over the next few years. Now, while this area is pretty much set up and I do need to do a lot more cleaning and organization over here, I think it'll make it one look a lot better, but I'll be able to find things a lot easier. So that's on my list to do this year. I also think I want to paint the walls because right now I'm just having white walls. It could look better, especially since they're unfinished. Now over here, there's a lot of space that I am not using. It's really mainly used for storage right now. So I bought some sanding equipment to do some body work. And then I have a bunch of the 69 Mustang panels still off the car that I need to go on. So a lot of things I want to clean up and repaint. Uh, this I actually purchased because the one that I had was broken, but this one does have a hole in it. So this is something that I figure out what type of bench I want to put here. But looking at it from this angle, there really isn't too much room there, so I don't want to put something too big because it won't leave me enough room to work on the car. Well, that's the end of the 2023 garage tour. A lot has changed this year. A lot's gonna change next year. So don't forget to like this video, subscribe to follow along on any of these projects or as we build out this garage. Thanks for tuning in to Smacky's Garage.